Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one of them heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in our native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy Pentecost. You know, I love the drama of this feast, and it's so easy to get caught up in it. The driving wind, the tongues of fire, and different languages proclaiming the gospel. But underneath the drama is an invitation, and I don't want to miss it. And that invitation is to spiritual adulting, where discipleship means discerning the movement of the spirit and responding to it. Like a grown-up, like a boss. This is not a life for the faint of heart. I made my religious vows on the vigil of Pentecost, and I totally got caught up in the excitement of that day. I was just delighted that sisters and friends and family all came to the ceremony and the reception afterwards. My mom is an artist, so we had flame decorations on each table and throughout the room. It was a time of joy and laughter and celebration, feasting, dancing. I felt like I was on fire with excitement and passion. The next morning, I shot out of bed with that same lingering excitement, and it lasted for the next few days, too. I was giddy and full of zeal. Now I can see why. In the Pentecost story from the gospel, people thought the disciples were drunk. I wonder if the disciples felt a little drunk, a little destabilized, a little giddy. Right after my Pentecost vows, I certainly felt that way. And then one day, I woke up and thought, now what? So much anticipation had gone into the vow celebration that I hadn't thought a lot about what would come next. 
the rest of my life. So the time following the ceremony felt a little more like a crash and burn than exhilarating Pentecost fire. When the flames and strong winds subside, what do you do then? I eventually settled into ordinary life and learned to pay attention to the movement of the spirit in its everyday expressions, but it took me a minute to settle down. I wonder if the disciples felt like that. They gathered to celebrate Pentecost, the Jewish feast that commemorates 50 days after Passover, which we celebrate 50 days after Easter. Their celebration was all whoosh, tongues of fire and wind. They were so filled with the Holy Spirit that they could talk to anyone and everyone. Wow! But then they woke up on the 51st or 52nd day after Easter. Now what? After the wind and fire and proclamations, many people were baptized. Then, in Acts, we hear what their communal life was like. They prayed together each day, and their community grew. I'm guessing that each one of them grew, too, as they learned what listening to the Holy Spirit means. It was a whole new way of being a disciple, following the Spirit within instead of that guy from Galilee named Jesus. It seems to me that the invitation of Pentecost is to transition to a phase of spiritual adulting. Adulting, as a verb, means doing the things that responsible grown-ups do that they didn't have to do as adolescents or children. So, adulting in the secular context looks like paying the bills and getting an oil change and mowing the grass. Spiritual adulting looks like discerning the movement of the Spirit and then acting on what it prompts you to do. It's me figuring out how to live vowed life after making vows, or a newly married couple figuring out how to build a life together and live each ordinary day. It's figuring out what God is calling each of us to do without having the historical Jesus there to sit down and tell us. Sometimes spiritual adulting makes me feel like I did on the brink of chronological adulthood, scared and unsure as I peered into the giant mystery of my future. Yikes! But here's the thing. The spirit does move. It always does. Just when I think I'm at an impasse, or I don't have a clue what to do next, or things seem impossible, The spirit moves, and something shifts, or becomes clear. It may not look like tongues of fire, but it might look like a new connection with someone, or an invitation that pops up that I feel I need to try. It might not sound like preaching in my own language, but it might. Or it might sound like a call back after a job interview, or something someone happens to say that speaks right to my heart. It may not feel like a strong wind, but it might feel like a positive energy that moves me from within toward something new, toward doing the thing that scares me, even though it scares me, because I know I'm called to do it. Regular adulting can be hard. It can be a pain. And yet, we do it. Why? Because we're grown and growing. (laughs) It's what we do. Spiritual adulting is the same. It can be hard and painful, but it's how we grow and learn and change. God loves us as we are, but rarely leaves us alone to stay the same. God is always calling us to that edge where we have to risk and leap, and trust. I don't know about you, but I don't always want to live on the edge like that. But I'm here for it. Ultimately, I do want to follow the invitation of the Spirit because I want to grow into the person that God is calling me to be. How about you? We are the Church of the Spirit the church that calls ourselves to spiritual adulting. And maybe we call each other to that too.
So let's stay open. Let's listen. Let's trust the Spirit to speak to us and through us. Let's let it move us. Amen. And now let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. What was it like for you as you moved from adolescence to adulthood? How did you grow into it? What helped you? How have you grown and changed and matured spiritually throughout your life? How do you respond when the Spirit calls you, especially if it calls you to something challenging or risky or edgy? What helps you to say yes? Maybe you could spend a little time reflecting over all of this with God. What does God have to say to you? Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace.